and it's story time folks y'all i never thought that i would be able to reuse the audio of this clip but the police came and i left and survived to tell you this story guys all right let's get straight to it so i went to go visit my fiance i know i know i hadn't told you guys i was engaged yet but i was in the middle of filming living in my car and van q a part two and i was gonna tell y'all i am not single i am engaged <gasps> And I have not really told anyone, so yeah. <laughs> but then this happened. Two hours away from home. I like to stay local in case. You... So I'm trying to film. Okay, listen, guys, really quickly. So here's the thing. So I've been um, filming and posted in this neighborhood. And the neighborhood basically is stalking me at this point because um, they think I'm in a white van. <laughs> all right, all right, let's rewind to the beginning. So I arrived to see my fiance a little bit earlier than I intended. She wasn't ready for me, she was still cleaning and I was not trying to be part of that. So I leave and I go to this parking lot to just hang out and chill in my van because I live in here and that's what I do. I park at the very, very end. No one is next to me. I'm not bothering anyone. So I'm in this parking lot. I wasn't there for more than five minutes. When this dude comes up in his truck, parks right in front of the van, he gets out and start peeking in the windows like, hey, is this for sale? He's yelling out, is this for sale? Is this for sale? I had to crack the back window and yell out like, no, go away. Like it's not for sale. He's like, okay, I'm sorry, my bad. And then he gets in his truck, he circles around and goes right back into his driveway. He saw me park there because he was outside cutting his grass and his driveway is right across the street from the parking lot. But like I said, I was on the very end of it, nowhere near his house, not bothering anyone, just literally minding my business. 10 minutes later, he does the same thing. He drives up to the van, he revs up his engine, and then he turns around and goes and parks right back in his driveway, like trying to intimidate me. 10 minutes later, he does the same exact thing. So within like 30 minutes, I've already had an encounter with him three times. There was another dude, but I can only show you his backside because when he got out of the truck, his, like his, his thing was hanging out. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why, but I guess, I guess he assumed the van was also for sale, but I don't know why he walked to the back of it with his I don't know. <laughs> I guess he was trying to get a discount. I have no idea. Eventually I left. Uh, my fiance was ready for us to go have dinner and, and that was that. A couple days later, I needed to film a video. So I went back to the parking lot. I wasn't thinking anything of it. I was just trying not to be in anyone's way. And then the same dude comes again, drives around the van, revs up his engine, and then just goes back into his driveway. I don't know what he was trying to do. I, I, I don't know but I just knew that I wasn't gonna park there anymore. So the next day when I went to the store, I decided to leave out of the neighborhood on a different street so that he wouldn't see me coming in and out. I see this dead end street. It's in an open area, no houses are nearby. And I was like, this is perfect. I can be out in the sun, I can chill, I can edit my videos, I can film videos, I can do whatever I want. Just normal shit that I do living in my van. So I went to go film my next video at the dead end. And ironically, the dude in the truck is friends with the guy who lives across the street from the dead end. And he just happened to be at his house that moment when I was filming. He so once again, he sees me, he I comes, know. circles my van, revs up his he truck, and then he pulls off when he sees that I pick up my phone to film him. Why, what, what was the point of this? This is still the same dude who keeps following me. Is this really the same dude? Anyway, so one of the things that I, is this really the same dude? This dude keeps following me. Literally keeps following me. After he drives off, his friend comes and talks to me through the window, but I'll tell you what he said in a minute. That was that he left, but the next day, guys, it, it just goes on and on. The next day, we get a text from my fiance's neighbor talking about SOS. The cops are outside taking pictures of your van. 
I'm like, what the fuck? What is going on around here? <laughs> Maybe 20 minutes later, another guy walks up to the window. This is what the friend said. He was like, do you need help? And I'm like, no. And he was like, well, I was just calling because my neighbor, my friend, he saw you and he circled around. And I was like, that's your friend who keeps circling my van? Tell him he needs to leave me alone. The van is not for sale. I don't need help. And I don't want him to keep circling around my van. We live Pretty next door. Yeah, I've, that it's not I know that uh, a bunch of parents been coming to me and all because they see the van. They said the van is around or they concern. I don't know. Van, y'all Yeah, that's my van, but that's yeah, what I see. All right. I that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. Even so if you were just home. parking around because you were just parking around and looking for a place to sleep. I don't know how. There's nothing to do with that, man. You being at the dead end report, you being anywhere you want, as long as you're not blocking the roadway, like traffic. I wasn't there. No, I'm saying as long as you're not, there's no crime to be committed. Most mm -hmm. that any cop can do mm -hmm. is verify that the vehicle is not stolen and will only verify the VIN if you're not in it. Like if you were sitting at the dead end playing on your phone and someone called them 107, mm -hmm. called them suspicious, we just knock on the window and be like, hey, you okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. But that's not what happened. I have to fast forward because there's a lot going on just in general trying to film this. The beaches came in here. Ah! And there's a lot that happened between that conversation with the cop and what actually happened. Over the course of the next few days, everywhere I went, people were just acting fucking weird around me. Taking pictures, chasing after me, um, just giving me weird looks. I'd be driving down the neighborhood and kids are like running and jumping off their bikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, the little boy. <laughs> the little boy is running. <laughs> and I'm like, why is this still going on? Because we talked to the cop, we talked to a few neighbors, and at this point I was like, okay, something else is going on. And then I remembered that when the officer was there, one of the neighbors mentioned something about a post online. We found the post and there were almost 200 comments just coming up with these stories about what's going on with the van. Taking pictures of the van and posting it online and patrolling the house like they were going around and clocking like, oh, it's 11 something p.m. The van's still there. It's 2 a.m. The van is still there. I basically had a target on my back and didn't even know it. <sighs> After I saw all of that, I'm like, that's not gonna stop me from living my life. Like, I, I, I can't, I'm like, what, what you want me to do? I'm not gonna let people scare me out of doing what I do on a regular basis. So the next day I went back to the dead end so that I can film the Q and A response to the video I posted. This is exactly why I don't monetize my videos even though I have a million followers. And that's when shit hit the fan. So this is the first person I showed you. We've got another one right here. All right, so she's walking up. She calls me a he. Can I help you? What are you doing? I am chilling in my van. What are you doing? The police are coming. Good. At this point, I call my fiance. I'm like, yo, you have to come over here. Um, they just called the cops. The neighbors are out and I'm being surrounded. She tells me, hang up, just start filming. And that's what I did. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? All right. Can you do me a favor and step out of the van? He immediately asked me to step out the van, but didn't ask me my name or why I was there. So I said, I'll step out of the vehicle when she gets here. Subject's refusing to exit the vehicle. Dude, I literally just told you I will, but I'm waiting for her because I'm out here alone. You need to step out of the vehicle now or I'm going to place you under arrest. But my girl was taking too long. I was like, shit getting kind of aggressive <laughs> so i had to get my black ass out of there and step out of the vehicle <sighs> step to the front of the vehicle oh there she is step to the front of the vehicle thank you turn around face you got anything on you we need to know about no stay over there do not drive up on us stay over there so this is who i'm uh, i don't visiting. care we're on a stop they're not going to drive up on it. Go ahead and set your phone down on the hood of the car. Okay? Well, you said I can record. That's you can fine. record. You can record. You, you can, can keep it on. Okay. That's fine. Go ahead and place your hands on your back. Do you see a police uh, You're being detained. Turn around. Why am I being detained? Man, drive turn up around. On, Why am I being detained? I'm not going to ask you again. Do you have turn it? around. Place your hands behind you. You got it? Turn around. You got it? Turn around. I have no idea. The lady who called the cops, you can hear in the background screaming at my fiance when she just asked her like, what's going on? 
she didn't know who called the cops but she just asked the nearest person like what's happening what's going on because she knew that she couldn't approach me meanwhile they also cuffed my girl uh, i don't even understand why she was cuffed she pulled up and asked what was going on but she never even approached us after sitting in the back for 45 minutes they finally let me go because they couldn't charge me with anything but they did give me a ticket for parking on the wrong side of the road of a dead end street then after i signed the ticket guess what he finally asks yeah after 45 minutes they finally asked me what i was even doing in the first place the whole time i was in the back of the truck i was in there by myself nobody asked me shit Fast forward a little bit more, some other shit happened, but this video is becoming way too long, so I'm trying to wrap it up. The cops left, but there were still some neighbors out, so we went to go talk to them. I showed them my social media. I showed them the video of the dude circling me in his truck. I showed them the video where I'm filming myself as everything is unfolding. There was no apology, no sympathy, none of that. It was just like, well, you need to understand where we're coming from. And I do. like you're concerned about your kids i get that this mysterious van that you have not seen before again that you've never seen before this was not my first time coming to visit her in the van you just haven't seen it but i get it you were concerned but how concerned were you and i say you because i know that y'all are watching i showed you my social media and you followed me you guys just wanted to take pictures and then act tough online but you weren't concerned enough to do anything preventative. Why didn't you write a note and put it in the windshield? Like, hey, we're concerned. We've never seen this van before. Can you please call one of these numbers? Which I would have gladly done. Or why didn't you just come knock on the door of the house where the van was parked in front of for two weeks? Luckily, it was just me. If this was a situation where someone really wanted to take your kids, they could have because y'all ain't do shit, but just act tough online. So that's what happened. I really wanted to respond to you guys in the comments, but it got really racial really, really fast. And I'm just not the type of person that will call someone racist. I just don't think that that's fair to do unless I have like hardcore evidence that they are racist. People high up that have power, they will treat you any kind of way because they know that they can. So I can say that he knew that he had the power and he could just treat me any kind of way. So I won't call him a racist, but I'll call him a and I've had plenty of experiences with d to know that that's that shit I don't like. <laughs> for those who know me personally and those who have been following me for a while, all the newbies, this is a place of love. Everyone is welcome here. Um, even the trolls and the haters, like you guys are welcome here too. Really, I feel like you guys act that way just because you don't feel loved in your heart. And I love you, all of you. So you're all welcome here. And I just don't have place here um, for all the racism and hate and all of that stuff. Now, I'm a jokester. I love to make y'all laugh. I will crack jokes and sometimes they're racial, not racist, and no one is safe. I will crack jokes on my own people. Y'all know I just went to the hood for the first time <laughs> to get my tire fixed. By the way, the tire is still, it's holding on. I, I went all across the country um, with the tire, with the plug or whatever it was I got from the hood and it was great. I will crack jokes on white people, Mexican, like no one is safe, but it's all jokes, it's all love. And if we can all laugh together, I really can't ask for anything more because at the end of the day, it's night. And also we are all one, one human race. I don't believe that all cops are bad and I know that they're not all good. I don't believe that every white person is racist and I don't believe that all white people can't cook. I, I, I had to throw that one in there because you know, ah. listen, if you're white and you can cook, invite me over mostly because I'm hungry, but also, I, you know, we, I, yeah, because I'm hungry. <laughs> and if you're white and you can't cook, you can still invite me over. I'll come over and I'll teach you how to cook. And we'll do like a whole show. We'll call it Nate's Plates. It's the fall, it's that time of year for like, warm yummy soups and I would love to make a soup with crackers. I love you guys and more shenanigans are on the you guys this was like these shenanigans are getting a little dangerous <laughs> but it's not gonna stop me like I said I'm still living a life that I want to live I'm following my happiness 
and that's all I could do. And whoever, whoever, <laughs> hashtag free Nate. I never thought that that would be a hashtag of my life, but I, I, I feel like I have street cred now. I'm gangster. <laughs> oh, and the person who sent me bail money on Venmo, thank you, but I already sent it back to you. It was very, very generous, but I didn't need to be bailed out. However, if you want to send it back out of the kindness of your heart, it's okay. I will gladly accept it, but um, you put in the caption was bell money and I just, I had to send it back. I need to get back in my car. Like I said, now you guys see why I prefer my car over my van. That's just one reason, but it's a fucking big reason. Anyway, um, so again, I love you guys. Thank you for checking up on me and I will see. Mwah. <laughs>